Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. We're following the latest from the Hamas attack on Israel. What officials are saying this morning after Israeli Defense Forces have declared a state of alert for war. Plus, what St. Mary's Law School is doing to kick statistics showing a small percentage of Latino women becoming attorneys. And taking you outside with live cam and uh, things, dare I say, feeling a little bit chillier this morning on your Sunday. Man, some great weather this entire weekend. Sarah standing by with the latest in our forecasts. Good morning. Good morning. It's Sunday. It's Sunday. <laughs> yeah. RJ, I was wearing a sweatshirt last night. I saw that, yes. So you went outside yesterday to the KSAC Garden, and I saw your post on Instagram. You were like, yeah, well, this might require at least a long well, sleeve shirt. I'm just, like, you know, the uniform <laughs> all summer long, T-shirt, yes. jean shorts, T-shirt, mm -hmm. jean shorts. So I packed T-shirt, yes. jean shorts, yeah. walked outside. Sarah? Oh my goodness. I was like, mm -hmm. what, I don't even know if I, I don't, where are my sweaters? Where are my, I put a rain jacket on from Case that I was wow. like, <laughs> I don't, I forgot how to dress. Here's the Long thing. Long sleeve weather. Yes. I gotta say, Sarah and I, we're sweater girlies. Mm -hmm. As soon as the temperature dips below 60 degrees, Sweater. It's oh, now, now it's like it's below out. 75, Sarah. Yeah. Oh, that's true. <laughs> it's just like, hey, oh, I'm so cold. <laughs> but you won't need the light jacket all day long. I mean, but it's still going to be very comfortable today. Take a look at temperatures this morning. It's 50 degrees in Kerrville, 57 in New Braunfels, 57 in San Antonio. Good morning, Uvalde. It's 56 degrees, 58 in Gonzales, and 56 in Pleasanton. Our average low this time of year is 63, so we're quite a bit cooler than that. And it's nice and crisp and cool across the state to Texas temperatures in the 40s in Amarillo and Lubbock. Honestly, all across the nation, things are feeling a lot like fall with the exception of Miami and Phoenix where it's in the 80s. Uh, but otherwise, a nice cool fall morning for all of us across the United States. Take a look at your KSAT 12 hour forecast. Again, you're not going to need the jacket all day long or the light jacket all day long, but it's still going to be very, very pleasant. 65 at 10 around noon. It's going to be 72 temperatures in the 70s in the afternoon with low humidity. Winds are gradually going to turn to the south today at about five miles per hour. Hey, coming up in the forecast, I'll tell you how long this nice, cool uh, morning will last. We'll take a look at when humidity returns and a look in the Pacific Ocean. There's a tropical storm there that is going to bring some across the state of Texas, some rain. Details ahead. RJ, Sarah. Sarah, thank you. A man charged in a brutal attack at a barber shop more than three years ago was in court this week. Yeah, his name is Damian Campbell, and he's charged with murder and two counts of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Erica Hernandez looks at where the case stands and when it could go to trial. It's been more than three years since Haley J. O'Regan was fatally stabbed at the diesel barber shop on Bandera Road on May 6, 2020. O'Regan and two others were allegedly attacked by Damian Campbell. According to the arrest affidavit, Campbell went into the barber shop after it was closed and told the employees he wanted to set up a future appointment. As they tried to help him, he allegedly attacked them. Campbell was last seen in the 186 District Court back in February, but a competency hearing was requested. Eight months later, he has been ruled competent to stand trial. Was there a discussion on whether either side is ready for trial at this point? Both the state and defense telling Judge Christina Escalona they had an out-of-state witness and would need some time to arrange their travel. But with the holidays fast approaching, scheduling a date a few months from now would be too difficult. Because of the age of the case and how long Mr. Campbell has been in uh, their county jail, this will be a priority case. Campbell's defense attorney says he filed a notice of insanity defense, which means he will present evidence to show Campbell had a mental health problem at the time of the murder. The case will be called back in the next 30 days. And then after that, if and when it does go to trial, it could probably be early next year. At the Kathina Reeves Justice Center, Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Erica. A man was hit and killed on the city's northwest side after a driver hit the man while he was crossing the roadway. San Antonio police say this happened Friday night in the 700 block of Bandera Road. The victim's identity has not been released at this time, and that driver did not stop to render aid and will be charged with failure to stop and render aid, resulting in death when found.
25-year-old Israel Cortez is behind bars charged with murder after admitting to a family member and a friend that he killed a man during a fight last month. So this is all according to arrest records. Cortez called 911 when the incident initially happened and stated the victim showed up to his home with a stab wound. Police searched his house and found two knives with one that appeared to have blood on it. Cortez's bond is set at $200,000. Now we turn to this developing conflict in the Middle East. The fighting between Israel and Gaza continued overnight where more rocket fire was exchanged. Liz Landers has the latest developments after an all hands response from Washington with President Joe Biden, Secretary of State Anthony Blinken and Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin in touch with the respective counterparts in Israel. A second day of intense fighting continues between Hamas and Israeli military forces following air, land and sea attack by Hamas during the pre-dawn hours of Saturday, which has claimed hundreds of lives and thousands of injuries on both sides. It's the first time in 50 years Israel has been surprised by attack. Hamas says that their deadly actions are due to the Israeli government's policy occupation of Palestinian land, along with other grievances. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu responding to Hamas, saying that, quote, Israel will settle the score. In Washington, congressional leaders and President Biden both condemned the attack. Mr. Biden spoke by phone Saturday with Netanyahu and addressed the nation, offering full U.S. support. Israel has the right to defend itself and its people. Full stop. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken has been working the phones with his counterparts in the Middle East and elsewhere to try and de-escalate the situation. Meanwhile, the FBI and the Department of Homeland Security, while not having specific intelligence indicating a threat to the U.S., have issued a public safety notification to law enforcement nationally, urging them to remain vigilant. There will also be an emergency meeting of the United Nations Security Council today in New York with a wider question as to how much more this conflict may escalate. In Washington, Liz Landers, ABC News. The FBI and Department of Homeland Security are closely monitoring developments in Israel and warning state and local law enforcement to be vigilant. The agencies issued a bulletin about public safety to law enforcement. This is not current intelligence indicating a threat to the United States, but they noted anti-Semitism remains part of domestic extremist threats in the U.S. that has experienced it in the last couple of years. Close to 2,000 people have died following a powerful earthquake in Afghanistan. This happened yesterday. The 6.3 magnitude quake struck the third largest city in that country with multiple aftershocks. This latest disaster follows a quake that hit Afghanistan in June of this year, killing more than 1,000 people. Well, protesters rallied in Austin at the state capitol in opposition to any legislative attempt to pass a law on school vouchers. So those vouchers would use tax dollars to help parents put their children in private schools. It's an idea Governor Greg Abbott has supported and has promised in the past to call a special session to get a school choice law passed. The Texas State Teachers Association has publicly uh, denounced the idea, saying school choice would essentially defund the public school system. That third special session starts Monday afternoon. All right, we're getting you up and going on your Sunday morning. Time now is 6.08 and a cool and crisp 57 degrees outside. It's crazy saying Yes. <laughs> okay, after the break, what one nonprofit in San Antonio is doing to help bring awareness to autism and give back to the autism community. Welcome back. A walk to bring awareness about autism and raise money for local charities was held yesterday by the nonprofit Autism Speaks at Texas A&M San Antonio. Many people came out to support those whose lives are affected by autism. Nearly 90% of those funds donated are going to programs that help people with autism, and the majority of the money is going to those underserved areas. For more information about their San Antonio walks and what you can do to help, head over to ksat.com. It's a lot of stuff going on. Lot, <laughs> lots of people outdoors. Mm -hmm. What a yeah. perfect time to be outside, Sarah. Oh my gosh, did you guys see the sunset last night? 
No. It was not. totally beautiful. That's okay, okay because I've got pictures I'll show you so, in okay. the next half hour. But <laughs> it was a gorgeous day yesterday. I was able to sit outside and be outside for most of the day. Mm -hmm. Absolutely beautiful. And this morning, we're waking up at 57 degrees in San Antonio. If you get an opportunity, get outside this morning and just experience that crisp, cool fall air. 50 in Kerrville, 55 in Hondo. It's 56 in Uvalde. Still in the 60s in Del Rio and Creek of springs, but we've got about an hour or so before temperatures come down even more. 58 degrees in Gonzales, 57 in New Braunfels, and it's 54 in Rock Springs. So take a look at this morning's lows. 58 in Holotus, 56 at JBSA Randolph, 52 in Bulverde, and 50 in Bernie. The average low this time of year is 63, and in fact, this morning's low of 57, it might even get cooler, is the coolest we have been in San Antonio since April 30th, 161 days. It is nice to see this uh, weather change for the better after the hottest summer on record for San Antonio. And we've got another cool morning in the 50s. Tomorrow morning, it'll be 58 degrees by Tuesday morning into the middle of the week. We're actually going to see humidity come back up. And so because of that, it's not going to be as cool in the morning hours. But by Saturday and Sunday morning lows will be back down into the 50s because of a cool front. So let me take you through your case at 12 hour forecast. Low humidity all day is going to make it feel very pleasant by 10. We'll be at 50 uh, 65 rather uh, around 10 and then in the afternoon temperatures will warm into the 70s. So you won't need that light jacket all day long, but it is going to be very pleasant this afternoon. 74 around one and then for the high temperature 80 degrees today. We'll be looking at winds turning from the north to the south at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. So light and variable winds for us. It's going to be 79 in Kerrville, 81 in Canyon Lake, 83 in Del Rio, 79 in Yavaldi, 81 in Pleasanton, 80 in Gonzales, and it'll be uh, 80 in Fredericksburg, a little cooler than seasonably average. All right, it is still hurricane season in the Pacific and in the Atlantic, but let's talk about this Pacific storm. This is Tropical Storm Lydia. Now, Tropical Storm Lydia is on the cusp of becoming a hurricane. It is forecast to become a hurricane and move ashore to areas close to Guadalajara and Puerto Vallarta by about Tuesday in the afternoon as a Category 1 hurricane. It'll fall apart across the mountains of Mexico, but it is expected to bring a little bit of moisture toward South Texas. Now, unfortunately for us in San Antonio, most of the rain, if not all of the rain, is expected to stay south and east of San Antonio. So areas like Laredo, Corpus Christi, Victoria, Hallettsville, even out to Houston, going to be getting a little bit of moisture from Tropical Storm Lydia. But here in San Antonio, we are likely to mostly stay dry. I did include a 20% chance for an isolated shower storm on Tuesday and Wednesday. The biggest thing you'll notice is that the the humidity is going to start to increase. So it'll be muggy again, especially by Wednesday. And you'll notice clouds cloudy on Tuesday, mostly cloudy on Wednesday. That's actually going to help to keep our temperatures down, though, so I'm not complaining. Highs will be in the low 80s by Thursday, though. We are going to see a warm day, 90 degrees but before it can get too hot. Cool front moves through Friday and that'll set up really nice weather. I'm hoping mostly clear skies for the solar eclipse, uh, which will uh, reach its ring of fire peak in San Antonio around 1152 in the morning on Saturday. We're going to be live streaming the solar mm -hmm. eclipse mm -hmm. for you. So we're excited about that. Hey, coming up, a great day to head to local pumpkin patches. Yesterday I showed you the pumpkin patch map. Yeah. I'll show you it again coming up in just a bit. <laughs> Where are you watching the eclipse? I will be here. Yeah. So I will be on the roof. Oh, okay. cool. And we're going to have uh, one of our cameramen. He's going to be focused on the sun and mm -hmm. show the whole eclipse the whole time. Awesome. It's going to be cool. Good stuff. A Where little roof, a roof party here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the countdown to the ring of fire is on. It is on. Yes, Thank absolutely. you, Sarah. <laughs> All right, guys, 616 right now and 57 degrees outside. Coming up next, stats show a small percentage of Latina women become attorneys as it remains a challenge. St. Mary's Law School is wanting to change that, what they're doing to combat those stats. 
Going to law school or becoming an attorney remains a challenge for Latinas, making up only a small percentage of attorneys. St. Mary's Law School wants to combat that statistic with the Latina Networking Summit. Camilia Wadish tells us how these women are helping each other in every stage of their legal career. Less than 2% of the legal field is made up of Latinas, um, and we really want to bring together Latinas from every stage because you really do need that support. Law student Annalisa Casanova-Smith is the first in her family to pursue a law degree. She helped organize this year's Latina Networking Summit. Attorneys are giving advice about how to pay for law school, LSAT application support, law school guidance, even how to negotiate pay. This is just such an important event for individuals like myself who don't know the answers to those questions, who don't have a, a relative or or family member who can embark on, you know, part on them, their own knowledge. First generation attorney Christina Zamorano says the Latina Summit at St. Mary's Law School is creating a network of support. Pre-law student Hannah Lopez, also first gen, is taking that advice seriously. And they're telling us that we have to have a sisterhood, that there is a boys club that we have to compete with and we need to create a, like a sisterhood that is gonna help us in the future. This is the second year for the Latina Summit and the number of women attending this year has doubled. Also new this year, they had a moot court and they're giving away scholarships. And when you feel acknowledged and you feel seen, you really feel like you can do anything. Camila Juarez, KSAT 12 News. All right, good to see that those ladies are helping each other out in St. Mary's Law School here in San Antonio. It is 621 and 57 degrees. All right, after the break, a recent report shows more than half Americans carry their debt from month to month. What you can do to lower your credit card debt. Welcome back. Well, total credit card debt for Americans has reached $1 trillion. Yes, $1 trillion with a T. And more than half Americans carry their debt month to month. ABC's Tim Pullman explains what you can do to help lower your debt. Experts say there's usually a good reason why credit card debt can start to grow. It's usually either a one-time emergency expense, like a home repair, a car repair, a medical bill, something like that, or it's just day-to-day -day expenses outpacing your paycheck. It's not usually a vacation or a shopping spree. Ted Rossman, senior industry analyst at Bankrate.com, says the debt can add up quickly. If you have the average balance, which is about $6,000, at the average interest rate, which is about 21%, if you make minimum payments, you'll be in debt for almost 18 years and you'll end up paying almost $9,000 just in interest. Rossman says one good way to attack your credit card balance is to change your credit card. My favorite tip is to sign up for a 0% balance transfer credit card. I'm actually really pleasantly surprised how generous and abundant these offers have continued to be. So my tip there would be open one of these cards but don't add new purchases. Just divide what you owe by the number of months in your 0% term. If you're carrying debt on multiple cards every month, experts say consider focusing on paying off the balance on the card with the highest interest rate or the one with the lowest balance. This can save you money on interest payments and motivate you to keep going. Just remember to pay at least the minimum balance on all of your cards to avoid trouble. If you have a lower credit score or higher debt, you might consider working with a reputable nonprofit counseling agency. They can often negotiate something like a six or 7% rate over four or five years. And they'll walk you through the process. They'll help you pay off this debt. Tim Pulliam, ABC News, Los Angeles. All right, good advice there. 627 right now and 57 degrees outside. Ugh, love, love to see it. Mm -hmm. Look at this. It's beautiful. You're definitely gonna need a sweater. Unless you're from like the Northeast and people are laughing at us. Go ahead, laugh at us. <laughs> We're actually, Texans, okay? Actually, we need I, think, I think everyone who endured this summer is not laughing. Yeah. We're just enjoying this. Hey, Sarah has her forecast. We come back. Good Sunday morning. It is now 6.30, October 8th. Sunday fun day, hanging out with you guys. <laughs> It's been fun 
having you this weekend, RJ. Oh, thank you. Appreciate that. Appreciate it. Did you it. make it yeah. outside yesterday? I did for a little bit. Went on a little run outside near the Blue Star area, and a lot of people were out and about. It just uh, was a good vibe, good feelings out there. Oh, I'm sure. Sarah, beautiful weekend just to be outside. Yeah, way to go, RJ, with that Gen Z language. <laughs> good vibe. Vibes. Good feelings. Good vibes. <laughs> yeah, it's good vibes. Sarah, outside. don't date yourself. <laughs> I'm not going to. Okay, it is 57 <laughs> degrees outside right now. Our coolest morning since the end of April in San Antonio. Very nice to see this. 55 in Hondo, 55 in Uvalde. It's still 61 in Del Rio, but nice, crisp, and cool everywhere across South Central Texas. Let's take a closer look around the metro area. Hey, it's in the 40s in Bernie right now. 48 degrees. Um, Bernie Stage Road right at that Kendall and Bear County line. Uh, 55 in Hondo, 57 in New Braunfels, and 56 in Converse. One of the reasons why it feels so good outside is because humidity is low. Dew points are in the 40s. That is dry in our uh, dew point uh, legend there. And throughout the day today, we expect those dry conditions. It's going to be a great day to soak up that fall like air east winds at about five miles per hour by 1065 noon 72 79 around three great to head out to the pumpkin patch where we get those fall pictures in and here's a look at uh, on ksat right now a map of pumpkin patches around san antonio go ahead and scan that qr code it'll take you to that map otherwise you know we're going to have another cool morning tomorrow before humidity returns plus we'll talk about a small chance for rain across Texas in the week ahead. Details coming up, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Construction in Southtown is causing concern to small business owners. That's right, the city is working on its South Alamo Street project and crews now closed one major intersection that businesses say that they're relying on. So our Avery Everett took these concerns the city and shows us what solutions they're working on. This is the corridor to get down into our neighborhood. A crossing cut off now causing stress to business owners across Southtown. We were on all high alert. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a challenge that we've had to kind of just now undertake on top of just operating. Crews with the city closed off access to South Alamo Street from Cesar e. Chavez this week. It's just one phase of the South Alamo Street project. We want to, you know, make it as painless as possible for them, but we know it's inconvenient. From a 2017 bond project to a current day construction effort, the city says it communicated this project and its potential effects across September. You know, we want to talk to those folks in that immediate area and make sure they know because they're the most impacted, but we do put other things out there for everybody to see. But some of those businesses along South Alamo say they only started to see emails, flyers, and in-person visits a week out. We didn't really know until recently in the last probably five, six days of the true impact. This part of the construction is set to last for three weeks. Now the sidewalks are still open, but with the road blocked off, businesses are worried people won't know Southtown is still open, but the city says it's working on a solution. What's important is that, that we keep that detour uh, and that we let folks know that they're still open for business. A spokesperson with District 1 says these signs will soon go up directing people to Southtown. They're also working on areas for free parking and scaling up their social media efforts. The entire project is set to end in early 2025, but this crossing should open up again in the coming weeks. And if that goes past that, what is the next steps for support for us in our area? Owners now hoping this intersection closure doesn't close their businesses too. That spokesperson with District 1 confirmed with me that the Durango lot here will be free for the rest of October to help drive business back to Southtown. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Avery. More than 30 people have been arrested in Guadalupe County after a narcotics investigation led by several law enforcement agencies. An official with the Seguin Police Department told KSAT the arrests are results of various investigations. Most of the suspects are facing drug possession or distributing charges. One man is facing three counts of aggravated kidnapping and another is facing a robbery charge. The investigation also led to findings of $65,000 worth of stolen property. A former San Antonio attorney accused of scamming his clients out of money has pleaded guilty to wire fraud and money laundering charges. That's according to the United States Attorney's Office in the Western District of Texas. Christopher John Pettit is accused of sending emails, texts, and letters persuading clients to deposit money to his firm. Records show that Pettit would use the funds from his clients to pay for other clients' debts and to support an extravagant lifestyle. Pettit will be sentenced on January 11th of 2024. He faces a maximum of 20 years in prison.
A person was sent to the hospital with a broken leg and injury to their head after being hit by a driver on the city's north side. San Antonio police say that person was walking in an auto zone parking lot just before two Saturday morning when they were hit. The victim is expected to be OK once the driver of the vehicle is found. They will face a charge of failure to stop and render aid, resulting in serious bodily injury. The Bear County Sheriff's Office is asking for your help in locating a 13 year old who has not been seen since Wednesday. You see her right there on your screen. Zariah Chloe Turnage was last seen around 530 on October 4th in the 800 block of Creek Gate Drive. She was wearing a gray T-shirt, black pajama pants with gray and white Jordans. Zariah is reported to have a condition that requires medication. Anyone with information on Zariah's whereabouts is asked to call the Bear County Sheriff's Office at 210-335-6000. Now to the crisis at the border. President Joe Biden defending his administration's announcement for an additional 20 miles of wall to be built along the southern border. ABC's Zareen Shaw has the latest as asylum seekers share the stories of their desperate journeys. This morning, Mexican officials reviewing this video, saying it shows hundreds of migrants trying to enter the U.S. The video coming the same week, the president broke a campaign promise, now committing to expanding the wall. The administration insists its hands were tied and that it had to use funds appropriated for the border wall. Sources tell us initial numbers show daily border encounters topping nearly 8,500, some at this transit station. Volunteers helping them board buses. What would you say to the federal government? They should step in and providing the resources that are needed. And we could very much welcome everyone with dignity. This couple traveled through seven countries. Panama, Costa Rica, eh, El Salvador. They're living in a makeshift campsite. Volunteers say some now battling illness and hunger. A few people that have been unconscious, body seized up, people going through seizures, people with spinal injuries from falls. Major cities across the country now feeling a squeeze. New York's mayor touring Latin America, telling migrants not to come. Our hearts are full and endless, but our resources are not. Republican candidates slamming Biden for not going far enough. 26 miles of wall ain't gonna get it. There have been presidents, both Republican and Democratic, who have uh, been unable to make any transformative change. And at the end of the day, for there to be transformative change at the border or in terms of immigration policy, there has to be legislation passed. All right, that was Zareen Shah reporting there for ABC. And just a reminder, we want to let you know that starting tomorrow, tomorrow Monday, there will no longer be Good Morning San Antonio's 4.30 a.m. half hour on GMSA. To better serve our viewers in the community we love, Good Morning San Antonio and KSAT will now air from 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. So we're not going anywhere. We're no. just starting 30 minutes <laughs> yes. later starting tomorrow morning at 5 a.m. All right, this is a change that allows for more immediate news gathering on the stories that matter to you and your family the moment that you wake up and it, at a time there that best works for you. So our dedication to breaking news from overnight traffic reports, accurate weather forecast continues on GMSA weekdays, 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. Watch here on KSAT 12 or stream live wherever you get news. All right, I'll be doing traffic tomorrow morning. So and I'll be, be right up. And yeah, I'll be oh, here, here on go. the desk with you too. <laughs> so just in different parts, but you know what? Still here together. Good stuff, sir. <laughs> <laughs> 639 right now and 57 degrees outside. Still ahead on GMSA, Advent calendar is becoming more and more creative each holiday season. What Stouffer's is doing with this year's and why people can expect it to be cozy. All right, can't wait for that and can't wait for this. It's Croctober. I love that for fans of Croc footwear. Still ahead, their latest announcement that was made because of popular demand. Those look like hot. Those <laughs> not, not like that's hot. They, they look like you're going to have sweaty feet. Yeah. Smelly yeah. I'm not feet. I'm a Croc guy, so I don't know. <laughs> well, maybe feet. not sweaty feet maybe this today. morning. Yeah. 57 degrees. <laughs> Sarah, we'll have our forecast when we come back. Temperatures aren't the only things dropping, so are the holiday sales, and they're starting early. <laughs> Sorry, Sarah Spivey Sarah is, like is dropping it over, <laughs> dropping there. Like that over there. It's your fault, you did it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're getting some deals starting earlier than ever. Retailers are competing for your dollars. 12 on your sides, Marilyn Moritz has some of the best October deals and the one thing that you need to wait on. 
Holiday sales are on, mixing candy corn and candy canes. As all the major retailers continue trying to one-up each other, they're starting their holiday promotions earlier than ever. This means October is now when you'll see all those big savings start, and there will be impressive sales all month long. Mark your calendars. Target's Big Circle Week sale continues through Saturday. Amazon's Prime Big Deal Days event is Tuesday and Wednesday. Walmart sale starts Monday, and Best Buy is offering sales all month long. Need some ideas? Consumer Report says October is the best time to buy certain top-rated products, like this mattress. The NOLA Natural 11-inch Queen Size is a latex hybrid. It's marked down to about $1,400. That's $700 off. Looking for headphones for a music lover or yourself? These Bose noise-canceling headphones are $80 off at Amazon, Best Buy, and Bose. In the kitchen, holiday party appetizers are easy-peasy with an air fryer. This Instant Vortex Plus is $109.95 on Amazon. And this Ninja Specialty Coffee Maker is marked down to $139.99 at Best Buy and the Home Depot. October is also a great time to look for deals on kitchen ranges and leaf blowers. But the experts say there is one thing you're better off waiting to buy. You should not buy a TV in October. TVs continue to be at their best price during Black Friday weekend. So hold off if you want to get the best deal on a new set. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. We need a lawnmower. <laughs> and my husband said mm -hmm. October is a good month to buy a lawnmower. I don't know if that's How true. is your lawn even doing at this point? We've been borrowing our neighbors. <laughs> no, but I'm saying it's, is it crunchy? <clears throat> no, it's actually started to come back a little wow. bit because yeah. of the rains, yeah. the recent rains mm -hmm. we've seen. So yeah, honestly, good weather to talk about this weekend. Sure, a lot of people are like, yes, lawn's coming back. Absolutely. Hey guys, oh, remember dirt. how we mentioned the sunset last night? Mm -hmm. Here's a look at a picture of that sunset last night. Absolutely beautiful. Wow. Beautiful. Yeah, cotton candy skies there as we saw some of those high thin cirrus clouds out and about right at around sunset. And the reason why it's been so nice outside is because humidity is nice and low. Here's a look at the current dew points. Dew points are only in the 40s right now. And the good news is we're going to continue to see low humidity through tomorrow. This is a look at tomorrow morning. Dew points will still be in the 40s. But by Tuesday afternoon, the humidity will rise. We're going to see dew points back into the 60s by Tuesday afternoon. So let's enjoy it while we can. Soak up this nice, cool weather. It's only 57 degrees in San Antonio, our coolest morning since the end of April. Northwest winds right now at about five miles per hour. You can see the first light of the day there as well. It's 49 in Kerrville, 55 in Hondo, 55 in Rock Springs, 58 in Pleasanton, 57 in New Braunfels. As we zoom a little bit closer to the metro area, 48 in Bernie Stage Airfield, 49 in Bandera, 48 in Comfort, 57 in New Braunfels, 56 in Converse, and it's 55 in Hondo. Here's a look at your KSAT 12 hour forecast. We are going to have partly cloudy skies today. Some of those high and cirrus clouds throughout the day. 65 at 10, so you'll need the light jacket now, but not by noon when it'll be 72 degrees. And then in the afternoon, warming up to about 80 degrees this afternoon in San Antonio. It's going to stay in the 70s for many locations, though. Here's a look at forecast highs today. Our average high is about 85, and you can see that will be 5 degrees cooler than that. It's going to be 77 in Lotus, 76 in Bulverde, 82 in New Braunfels, 80 in Seguin, 82 in Floresville, 81 in Pleasanton, 80 in Poteet, 79 in Uvalde, and 79 in Kerrville. Take a look at storm chances over the coming days. Very low. I mean, Tuesday, Tuesday night, and Wednesday, only an isolated shower or storm possible in San Antonio. But there are much better rain chances just to the south of San Antonio, all because of Tropical Storm Lydia, which is actually in the Pacific. Tropical Storm Lydia is on the cusp of being a hurricane. It will strengthen to hurricane uh, category one hurricane before it makes landfall uh, near Puerto Vallarta and Guadalajara. Going to be seeing a lot of rain from this by Tuesday afternoon, and then it'll fall apart across the mountains of Mexico. But again, slinging a little bit of moisture towards South Texas. So even though most of the rain will stay south of San Antonio, areas like Corpus Christi, even eastern Laredo, Victoria, Hallettsville, Houston, those areas will be seeing uh, some decent rain from about Tuesday through Wednesday. 
It's not out of the question to see an isolated shower storm in San Antonio from this, but it's not going to be that beneficial rainfall that we still need. We're still under exceptional drought in San Antonio. However, that uh, tropical storm is going to be bringing us some cloudier uh, skies on Tuesday and on Wednesday. Again, only an isolated shower storm possible on Tuesday and Wednesday. So enjoy the low humidity while you can right now. By Tuesday, Wednesday, those clouds are going to keep those temperatures down, even though it'll be noticeably muggy. By Thursday, 90 degrees for the high. It's not out of the ordinary to see 90s in, Octo in October. And then a front arrives Thursday night into Friday. That'll set up hopefully a very nice viewing weather for the solar eclipse, which that ring of fire will uh, appear in the sky 1152 AM. Sounds pretty intense, right? Mm -hmm. Ring of fire. It's just the solar eclipse. So um, <laughs> the moon is moving in front of the sun uh, at that time. Uh, but you'll need proper eye protection. So if you don't have those fancy glasses that are ISO certified, you can make a, a projector uh, that I showed how to make mm -hmm. that actually on ksat.com. So. Very Science with Sarah. Yeah, that was a great it segment you guys the did. The kids were loved it. Oh mm -hmm. my gosh, the sun, sun was behind the clouds, yeah. but right when we went on air, the sun came out and the kids were like, "Oh my gosh." <laughs> it's a really cute video. You got to check pretty it. Cool. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Thank Good you, stuff. Sarah. Good stuff. All right, guys, 650 right now, and wow, 56 degrees outside. I Things know. looking great your Sunday morning. Okay, the sights and sounds from this year's big Texas Comic Con. That's coming up a look at the costumes that were not all store bought. Welcome back. Well, it's not Halloween just yet, but you'll see a lot of costumes around downtown today. The Big Texas Comic Con is at in town here at the Henry B. Gonzalez Convention Center. As you can see right there, fans are definitely bringing their A-game with the apparel. We talked to a few cosplayers about their costumes, and it turns out not everything you see is from a store. This one is multiple pieces, and you can see kind of messy on the inside. It's like about 12 individual parts. Each part took six to eight hours to print. Uh, and then once you get them put together, sanded down, and painted, uh, 30 to 40 hours worth of work. In some cases, years, some cases, months. Just depends on what you want to put into it. Wow. <laughs> There was a lot there, including the little audio part. The Big Texas Comic Con wraps up today at the convention center. Tickets are still available, and we have a link on ksat.com. Is that Boy Meets World? What was that? Mr. Feeney was, was that there. Mr. Feeney? Yes, Mr. Feeney was there. Wow. I saw a picture of him through a, on social media, yeah. I don't know his name. I just know him as Mr. Well, Feeney. I think, I think everyone knows yeah. him as Mr. Feeney. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Is there a costume you would dress up as? I don't know. No. Maybe Grogu. Okay. Something That's cute. good, yeah. Iron Man, I'm a big yeah, Iron like Man a little guy. alien. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe you need to make it out there. Okay, guys, 6:54 right now, 56 degrees outside. Here's a look at what's coming up on Good Morning America. And good morning to you on this Sunday. Coming up here on GMA, Israel launching strikes overnight against the Palestinian militant group Hamas after an unprecedented attack on Israel. The death toll now in the hundreds as we hear from the volunteers treating the thousands injured. And a husband and father whose wife and two kids were kidnapped. We're going to have the very latest from James Longman on the ground in Israel this morning. Plus, it's feeling like fall, cooler conditions coming to most of the country as the first widespread frost and freeze hits the plains. And finally, billion dollar dreams. The Powerball drawing overnight, now the third largest in its history. We're going to tell you if there was a lucky winner overnight. That is all ahead right here on GMA. Companies are getting more and more creative with their advent calendars every holiday season. All right, never thought I'd be saying this, but we now have an advent calendar for frozen foods. Yes, Stouffer's has announced its first ever advent calendar, the Comfort Calendar. Comfort Calendar. In it, you will find frozen meals, including, do you have to keep this in the freezer? I'm I would confused. Guess. <laughs> Stouffer's classic favorites like a family-sized macaroni and cheese, family-sized lasagna with meat and sauce, and the chicken bacon ranch bowl. Okay, additional sides will also be included there. The calendar will cost about 40 bucks and will be available through monthly drops throughout the rest of the year. Drop I'm so is. confused. Does it have to be in a freezer? It's, maybe it's a mini freezer itself. That's cute. Like a little mini fridge or something. Yeah. Okay, Crocs are going country in honor of the special month known as Croctober. Okay, the iconic casual footwear brand announced Thursday it is launched. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now.
The fighting continued overnight between Israel and Gaza as this conflict continues to escalate. President Biden and his administration vowing that the U.S. will do everything to support Israel. I'm Liz Landers in Washington for ABC News with the latest. And from money laundering to fall finance trends, we're talking all about things green money. Yes, so you can balance the latest in finance while balancing your checkbook. I can't believe I'm saying this. Mm -hmm. It's 55 degrees outside this <laughs> morning. <laughs> we're wearing sweaters. It's chilly. Y'all, it's finally over. Mm -hmm. Those hot temps and Sarah Spivey will have our forecast. Yeah, she was a dancing a little bit She's earlier, dancing. probably because of these awesome temperatures. I just stepped outside. I wanted to get a feel of the air. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you went outside, Sarah, earlier was like, rooftop selfie. I'm like, no. <laughs> I was like, I don't want to go outside. It. I'm actually, you know what? I, I guess I can't be happy. I'm either hot, Sarah, or I'm cold. It's 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 very, yeah. it's chilly outside. Long sleeves. Well, really the the weather will. Do you're just like Goldilocks? Okay? <laughs> not too hot, not too cold. Just a little princess this, over here. This <laughs> afternoon, the weather will be just right. Oh, Sarah. thank you. You're going to be in the 70s nice. with low humidity. Hey, take a look outside right now. It's only 55 degrees in San Antonio. It's only 56 in New Braunfels, 52 in Hondo, 54 in Yavaldi, 60 in Del Rio. In the Hill Country, y'all, in the Hill Country this morning, it's in the 40s. 46 at Bernie Stage Airfield, 47 in Comfort, 48 in Bandera, 48 in Kerrville. Now, you will need a light jacket if you're heading out in the next couple of hours, but by the mid-morning, it's going to be really comfortable outside. You're not going to need that light jacket. One of the reasons why it's so nice out there is because humidity is low. I'm showing you the dew points. Dew points are in the 40s, which is at the bottom of the scale there. Absolutely gorgeous outside. Perfect for a pumpkin patch, maybe. It's Sunday after all, pumpkin patch with your family. Temperatures are going to be climbing steadily, but we'll be at 65 at 10, 72 at noon, 79. Winds will turn from the north to the south at about 5 miles per hour. If you're curious about where pumpkin patches are across the city, go ahead and scan this QR code. It'll take you to a map for pumpkin patches. It is the season after all. Hey, how much longer are we going to have crisp, cool mornings, and how warm will we get in the week ahead? Details coming up. RJ, Sarah. Thank you very much, Sarah. More than 30 people have been arrested in Guadalupe County after a narcotics investigation. The Seguin Police Department says their arrests are from several investigations. Most of the suspects are facing drug possession or distributing charges. One man is also facing three counts of aggravated kidnapping. Officials found over $65,000 worth of stolen property during these investigations. A former San Antonio attorney is accused of scamming his clients, pleading guilty to wire fraud and money laundering. The U.S. Attorney's Office in the Western District of Texas says Christopher John Pettit sent several messages to clients persuading them to send money to his firm. He would then take that money and give it to other clients so they can live an expensive lifestyle while paying off their debts. He will be sentenced this January with a maximum sentence of 20 years. And in your morning headlines, we're following the developing conflict in the Middle East. Yeah, absolutely. Fighting between Israel and Gaza continued overnight where more rocket fire was exchanged. ABC's Liz Landers with what's exactly unfolding over there and what President Biden is saying. A second day of intense fighting continues between Hamas and Israeli military forces following air, land and sea attack by Hamas during the pre-dawn hours of Saturday, which has claimed hundreds of lives and thousands of injuries on both sides. It's the first time in 50 years Israel has been surprised by attack. Hamas says that their deadly actions are due to the Israeli government's policy occupation of Palestinian land, along with other grievances. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu responding to Hamas, saying that, quote, Israel will settle the score. In Washington, congressional leaders and President Biden both condemned the attack. Mr. Biden spoke by phone Saturday with Netanyahu and addressed the nation, offering full U.S. support. Israel has the right to defend itself and its people. Full stop. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken has been working the phones with his counterparts in the Middle East and elsewhere to try and de-escalate the situation. Meanwhile, the FBI and the Department of Homeland Security, while not having specific intelligence indicating a threat to the U.S., have issued a public safety notification to law enforcement nationally, urging them to remain vigilant. 
There will also be an emergency meeting of the United Nations Security Council today in New York with a wider question as to how much more this conflict may escalate. In Washington, Liz Landers, ABC News. And more reaction here at home to those attacks in Israel. Governor Greg Abbott tweeting his support for the people of Israel, saying, Cecilia and I pray for the victims of the horrific terrorist attacks in Israel. You can see the tweet right behind me here. Texas fully supports Israel's right to defend themselves against these terrorists. Israel will always have a friend in Texas. Well, the Taliban say over 2,000 people have died after an earthquake hit the west area of Afghanistan. This makes it one of the deadliest earthquakes to strike the country in two decades. This situation is causing Washington to freeze about $7 billion of the country's international funding, crippling an economy already heavily relying on help because of its ongoing hunger crisis. The latest disaster follows a quake that hit Afghanistan in June this year killing more than a thousand people. And former President Donald Trump is dropping his lawsuit against his former attorney, Michael Cohen. Trump was set to be removed as part of the case, but was delayed because he had to be at a different trial. It was then rescheduled for tomorrow. If you remember, Trump sued Michael Cohen back in April for half a billion dollars, saying that he overstepped his boundaries as his attorney. The lawsuit was then filed after Trump was accused of charges dealing with hush money that Cohen was involved with. And speaking of Trump, Forbes did not include Trump on its newest list of the 400 richest Americans. The magazine estimates his value has gone from $600 million to an estimated $2.6 billion. While Trump has been facing legal problems here, Forbes says that it's actually because he's losing money from his social media platform, Truth Social, and his pricey office buildings. Forbes says that Trump has lied about his value to their editors in an attempt to get on those lists. And if it's your mission to get on that Forbes list, there are some fall finance trends. ABC money experts want you to know about. The first thing is to watch for is to watch, of course, your spending. ABC predicts over $11 billion will be spent for Halloween this year. A new report from Slick Deal says three out of four Americans impulse shop and nearly a quarter of people often spend more money than they actually have. And the price the average American spends over 300 extra dollars a month on just buying things impulsively. Second, you have you heard of gigging? And no, we're not talking about Texas A&M. <laughs> ABC says nearly 50% of Americans are taking on extra side jobs like Uber, DoorDash, to make more money. It's called gigging. Even if they earn over 100K, and that's what experts are calling gigging. And the third fall finance trend, betting, RJ. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> or you could just win the lottery because this is obviously a huge trend right now. Tomorrow night's drawing is at $1.55 billion. Yes, has billion with a B after no one won last night. The lottery says the chances of you winning are slim. But you know what? There's still a chance. One in 293 million. But yes, someone will have to win. And someone here in Texas, well, they came close to winning winning $361 million after Friday's drawing from a gas station ticket out in San Angelo. It said that almost a million tickets were sold for the latest drawing. Okay, so we're still keeping our fingers crossed. I haven't checked our my chance. ticket. I, I know like our, our you pool. You could be a millionaire. We could be sitting next to you. Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't I think our pool won. To work, yeah. If you won one million, well, would you quit your job or would you like I'd probably still show up. <laughs> I'd, but, I'd show up, but, but I'd definitely signs. think about, yes, definitely <laughs> be thinking about the future there. <laughs> All right, guys, time now is 8.09 and wow, 55 degrees out there on your Sunday morning. If you're a Sunday driver like us and want to enjoy this beautiful fall weather, we have a scenic route you'll want to add to your schedule later today. Take a look at your screen. If you're wanting to do some Sunday driving, this is a 54 mile route. We think you should check it out. Starting in Bernie, heading up to St. Trifon Farm in Vineyards and Wasp Creek Road for some award winning wines at this family fun winery. Then you can stop for lunch at Blackboard Barbecue while seeing the beautiful sights of the hill country along the way. And then Luke and Bach on a Sunday for some live music from local artists. 
And lastly, head back home on Old San Antonio Road through Old Tunnel State Park, where you can watch a colony of 3 million Mexican free-tailed bats that come out every night, Sarah, and sometimes even come out on the radar. Oh my goodness, yes, we often can mm -hmm. see them arriving back home to the cave in the morning mm -hmm. and leaving in the evening. I gotta tell you, one of my favorite pastimes growing up in this area was just to take, you know, those highways, back roads through Kendall County into Gillespie County. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah, some great, great scenic views. That was a very detailed plan there. <laughs> I know. I love Come on, that. MJ. Our, did you did you do that? MJ, did you come up with that? Oh, Way nice. to go, okay. MJ. Yeah. yeah. Our producer, That's awesome. MJ. <laughs> um, and guys, obviously, a lot of people are going to be out today yeah. uh, hanging out. And also, the Cowboys play tonight, so I know a lot of people are going to be fired up the Wait, what time is the grill. game? It's the Sunday night game, so people are probably grilling a little bit earlier yeah. in the day. Okay, so when I do my... Our teams are yes. facing yeah. off They today. are. I didn't want to bring it up, Sarah. Chiefs but... fan, Vikings, <laughs> Vikings fan. fan. We'll see what yeah. happens. Taylor Swift going to be there? Uh, we'll you know see. what? I'll probably watch. No comment. I'll okay, let you take know. a look outside with live cam right <laughs> mm -hmm. now. One thing I want to show you, toward the bottom right of your screen, you can actually see steam coming off of the building. It's been a long time since we've seen steam outside because it is nice, crisp, and cool. 55 degrees at San Antonio International Airport, 56 in New Braunfels, 52 in Hondo, 55 in Rock Springs, 60 in Del Rio. And it's actually uh, 48 right now in Bernie. But this is a look at this morning's lows. It got down to 46 degrees, 47 in Kerrville. It got down to 55 in New Braunfels and 54 in Seguin. This, my friends, is the coolest morning we have had, the coolest temperatures we have had since April 30th, 161 days ago. So yes, the seasons are changing and it feels wonderful outside. Now tomorrow morning we'll have another crisp and cool morning in the 50s, but by about Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, the mornings are going to be a bit more humid and uh, closer to 70 degrees, so not necessarily crisp and cool. The reason for that, slightly increase, a slight increase in humidity and cloud cover. We'll talk about that in just a bit. But for your KSAT 12 hour forecast, as you're planning your day heading out there, you'll need that light jacket right now, but by 10 it's going to be 65 degrees by noon 72 and as we look into the afternoon temperatures are going to be in the 70s for most of the day we will likely top off right near 80 degrees though this afternoon four or five o'clock and then this evening it's going to be wonderful so RJ was talking about firing up the grill great weather for grilling uh, great weather to enjoy the patio or the porch as temperatures this evening will fall into the 60s by 10 o'clock tonight so nice and cool 80 degrees in San Antonio 81 in Canyon Lake it's going to be 79 in Uvalde, 77 in Rock Springs, 78 in Victoria, 79 in Beeville, and 80 in Fredericksburg. All right. We're keeping a close eye on Tropical Storm Lydia. So Tropical Storm Lydia is in the Pacific Ocean. It is about to become a hurricane, about to become Category 1 Hurricane Lydia. And Lydia is expected to uh, take aim to parts of the western coast of Mexico, somewhere between Guadalajara and Puerto Vallarta. That's where it's expected to make landfall on Tuesday. Now, it'll fall apart across the mountains of Mexico by Wednesday morning, but it will likely allow for a funneling of some moisture to South Texas, combining with Gulf of Mexico moisture as well. Unfortunately for here in San Antonio, we expect most of the rain to be well to the south of San Antonio or to the east of San Antonio. So areas like Corpus Christi, the Rio Grande Valley, Victoria, Hallettsville, Houston, likely to get some rain. But in San Antonio, the most we'll get are cloud cover and a little bit of an isolated shower or storm possible. But chances only going to be about 20%. So as we look at your forecast, enjoy the low humidity today and tomorrow. By Tuesday midday, it'll become humid again. We're also going to see clouds return too. On Tuesday, it's probably going to be a pretty gray day. The good news with that is it's going to keep our high temperatures down on Tuesday and Wednesday. So highs will only be in the low 80s. Thursday is going to be a warm one, 90 degrees. This is that time of year where you're in between your summer and your winter clothes. <laughs> so by Thursday, it's going to be 90. Then a front will move through before it gets too warm on Friday. And that, my friends, will hopefully set up great weekend weather, not only to enjoy the weekend, but on Saturday, of course, we have that ring of fire solar eclipse, which will uh, be working the path of annularity 
basically just the ring of fire, will show up around 11.52 a.m. in San Antonio. And KSAT is your Eclipse Authority station. So if you go to ksat.com slash eclipse, you're going to find a ton of articles about what you can do, how you can safely view the eclipse. Again, remember, it is never safe to look directly at the sun. No. I don't know if you need me to tell you that, but... It's true. It's a good reminder, <laughs> yeah. for sure. And you guys have been doing so much in preparation for that. I'm really excited to see everything you guys have done and have ready to go. We're going to be covering it mm -hmm. next Saturday. Thank you, Sarah. Uh huh. All right, guys, it's 818 and 56 degrees outside. From myths to superstitions, Friday the 13th. Ooh. Happening this week, RJ. <laughs> we'll look at some interesting facts wow. up next. It's spooky out there. Spooky. Hey, the theme's looking great outside. Taking a look at live cam as the sun comes up on a beautiful Sunday morning, 56 degrees outside. We will be right back. Okay, hey, RJ, Halloween is quickly approaching and time is ticking to get those spooky decorations up. All right, so if you're still in the market, a special decoration, if you could even find this, has <laughs> recently gone viral. Take a look at this. This is not a jack-o'-lantern. This is an eight-foot-tall pumpkin-headed statue who goes by the name Lewis. You Cat do you, Lewis. Casual name, Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> and he has some words for people that want to call him a jack-o'-lantern. Take a listen. I am not a jack-o'-lantern. My name is Lewis. Lewis. <laughs> Lewis is just living, living his best life there. All right, you heard him. Lewis is the unlikely breakout star of the 2023 Halloween season. He's racked up 36 million views this week alone on TikTok. I saw these videos. People are going crazy when they find him. He retails for 180 bucks. I think it's at Target's where he's at. He's averaging 4.9 stars. Out of five, there you go, on Target's website. Lewis. Have you run into Lewis? No, and I don't I want haven't. to. <laughs> He does not mince Lewis, words. Yeah, no, definitely not. <laughs> okay, so something we like to do with our oh, guest anchors okay, here at GMSA cool. is test their knowledge. Oh, no. <laughs> so this That's is a Friday good. the 13th this week. So, RJ, yeah. mm -hmm. how well do you know your Friday the 13th trivia? Okay, I don't think I know it very well, but we will take a look here. Let's see what we got. Okay, here. which President RJ was especially superstitious of the holiday, avoiding 13 guests at meals and traveling on the 13th day of any month? Wow. So avoiding have, traveling. Okay, avoiding. We have FDR, all initials here, uh, FDR, JFK, or LBJ. You know what? I don't know, but I got to go with my uh, fellow Bobcat alum here, Lyndon B. Johnson, C, for the answer. Ooh, good oh, good job. <laughs> good job. Okay, Texas yeah. State, so right. LBJ, also Winston Churchill, refused to travel on Friday the 13th. Ah, okay. All right, question number two. Mm -hmm. Some Spanish-speaking countries have a fear of a different day of the week when it falls on the 13th. So is it Wednesday, Saturday, or Tuesday? Okay. I don't know this. Fear of a different day of the week when it falls on the, oh, okay. Uh, let's see, Wednesday, hump day. I think when, oh, Tuesday. Oh, boo. Okay, yeah, so Tuesday 13th is considered the unluckiest day in Spain. Ah, uh, it's just because it's early in the week and you're already thinking about the weekend there. <laughs> Okay. Going up on a Tuesday. Okay, which famous director was born on Friday the 13th? Christopher Nolan, Tim Burton, or Alfred Hitchcock? All right, I'm going to go with my guy Tim Burton. I love those movies. Uh, I Beetlejuice, he... I recently rewatched oh, that. So Tim Burton, classic. go. I knew it was Hitchcock. I was like, no, it's Hitchcock. <laughs> Good try, though. He was born on August the 13th in 1989. Excuse me, in 1899. Yeah. <laughs> also, Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen. Shout out Millennials. Mm -hmm. Also born Friday the 13th. The Full House. The Full House crew there. Alfred Hitchcock makes sense with all the movies yes. he did. Psycho. He was born those, yeah. to do them. Mm -hmm. And speaking of moving direct movie directors, we had to do one more about the movie Friday the 13th. So which 80s actor didn't appear in the franchise? Kevin Bacon, Corey Feldman, Cary Green. I don't even know who Cary Green is, but oh, uh, yeah. was... let's go. You know what? Kevin Bacon, Footloose. I don't think that was a no. Oh, boo. And, yeah, no, Carrie, uh, he's in everything. Remember, do you remember the Kevin Bacon game? No. We'd play in the oh, early 2000s. Oh, degrees of Kevin yeah. Bacon? Yes. We'd be like, okay, eight, you have to get to eight, eight people. <laughs> right. Eight connections. Yep. We yep. used to play that in English class. Okay. <laughs> I, I learned a Carrie, lot. Carrie Green? What is, 
I'm not sure who that She's is. She's like in a lot of 80s movies. Oh. I'll Google her for okay, you. Okay, yeah. Please. We're going to have to do that. You did You did okay. okay you got like I? two right. I, I did not do good. Or maybe you got one right. <laughs> yeah, one. The first one. Yeah. Shout out my Texas State alum there. LBJ. You have yeah. some improvement to do. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> 826 now. And uh, all right, we are up to 57 degrees, but it is still feeling amazing out there right now. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Good Sunday morning. It's now 8.30 and October 8th, and it is a beautiful, beautiful Sunday. It's beautiful. Great way to get the week started. It's beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> Sorry, we just did a uh, Friday yeah. the 13th trivia. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> it's my ghost. Have you put your Halloween decorations out? Are y'all uh, Yeah, we that? have. Oh, good. Yeah, we have, definitely. No, uh, my wife's all about it. Yeah, we have a, one She's of those a big girly. skeletons. Yeah, already spiders, bats, the whole deal. I had my husband yeah, put them out on that. Friday. They look good. We have <laughs> yeah. um, a Miss, we have Bonito and Bonita. Oh, okay. <laughs> the Bones couple. I love that. That is so cute. Yeah, it feels like fall outside this morning. Temperatures are in the 50s in San Antonio in South Central Texas. 56 in New Braunfels. Good morning in Hondo. It's 52, 55 in San Antonio. 57 in Pleasanton. 50 in Kerrville. As we take a wider view across the state, all of us enjoying a little bit of a crisp, cool feeling in the air. 51 in Lubbock, 54 in Dallas. And honestly, across the nation, it's a Good fall morning. Take a look at these temperatures in the 30s across the northern tier of the United States. Two places where it does not feel like fall right now. Uh, Phoenix, Arizona, where it's 80 degrees. And in Miami, it's 82 as well. Those are the outliers otherwise feeling like fall for most of us across the nation. Low humidity today. That's going to be the main story. Beautiful outside. By 10, it's going to be 65. So 10 degree jump from now to 10 o'clock. Noon, 72. In the afternoon, we'll be in the uh, 70s. And by 4 or 5 o'clock, that's when we'll see our high temperature of about 80 degrees. So all in all, a very nice day. And even becoming cool in the evening after sunset close to 715. Coming up in the forecast, we're going to take a look at the tropics in the Pacific. Moisture from that storm potentially going to bring some across Texas, some rain. Those details and a little bit of a warm up ahead in just a few minutes. Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. The CDC reports that one in 36 kids in the U.S. have autism, and the Autism Speaks nonprofit has helped over 26 million of them nationwide. This weekend, they held a walk to bring awareness about autism and raise money for local charities. Held at Texas A&M San Antonio, the event was for those who have been affected by autism to meet with other families and share support. 89% of the funds donated will go directly to programs that help people with autism to help underserved areas that do not have that easy access to those services. We've done this for the past three years and it's a great organization. Uh, raising money for the kids and for the autism to help other families is very special to us. For more information about their San Antonio walks and how you can join or help out, you can visit their website at act.autismspeaks.org. In your morning headlines for Hispanic Heritage Month, we want to continue raising awareness on issues affecting the community, and one of those is Alzheimer's. Hispanics are almost twice as likely to be diagnosed compared to other races. Melissa Adan tells us what the experts are saying. It's a disease affecting 13% of Hispanics who are 65 or older, Alzheimer's disease and related dementias. The cognitive disorder affects memory, thinking and behavior, and Hispanics are one and a half times more likely to be diagnosed compared to their white counterparts. According to doctors, various factors can play a part in the disease's development, among them obesity, diabetes and heart disease. Dr. Curiel Seed says missing early signs can be attributed in part to the Hispanic culture normalizing symptoms. The Hispanic community as a culture minimizes the way that we kind of address symptoms of memory loss. The symptoms are so mild, the person's living their day-to-day -day life, they're working, they're driving, etc., and they're ignoring their symptoms because the culture says it's okay, it's normal, it happens to everyone as we age. By 2060, an estimated 3.2 million Hispanics and Latinos will be living with Alzheimer's disease and other related dementias. Doctors encourage family members to pay close attention. When our older adult, our abuelita, abuelito, our tia, tia, when they develop symptoms, memory loss, when they stop socializing, when they have difficulty in conversations and finding the right words, then we tend to not 
necessarily address it with memory disorder specialists. There's a delay in really addressing the problem. Experts say early detection is key particularly Hispanics that are middle-aged, paying attention to our brain health and really understanding that Alzheimer's disease is a brain disease. It is not normal aging. The brain is an organ like any other organ that might experience symptoms of a disease. That was ABC's Melissa Adon reporting. Now there is no cure to Alzheimer's, but there's a few things to look out for when a person starts relying more on writing things down, losing thought and conversation, and consistently forgetting common words. President Biden is announcing about 20 miles of wall that will be built along the southern border with Mexico. And that news comes years after he promised to leave the wall alone on the 2020 presidential campaign. This news coming as thousands of migrants continue to arrive at the border every day, putting a strain on resources in cities along the border and all over the United States. Sources tell ABC News that daily border encounters are topping almost 9,000, and with no sign of those numbers slowing down, the Biden administration was forced to act. I was told that I had no choice. I can't say I don't like it. I'm not going to do it. And White House officials say funds put to the side under the Trump administration had to be used for construction of that wall. And protesters rallied at the state capitol in Austin yesterday to talk about the legislative attempt to pass school vouchers. So demonstrators say it is wrong to use tax dollars to help parents put their children in private schools when the money could be providing much needed help to our public schools. But supporters said the idea says that gives parents a choice on where they can send their child to school. Our Texas Constitution says that we are to provide free public education to all Texas students and children. They have decided to make sure their kids get the best education, whether it's public or private, and I think every parent in Texas should be able to have that choice. Governor Greg Abbott is set to discuss it during the third special session tomorrow afternoon. All right, a Texas dad taking matters into his own hands when dangerous drivers made the school drop off line a scary trip. And he has a unique way of schooling those drivers with a little help from his four legged friend. So this is Bruce Montgomery and Honey. Look at Honey right there. He's a Hutto dad using the love of dogs to encourage drivers to slow down near schools. Every morning, he and Honey drop off his kids at the local elementary school and then post up for those driving down the road. Have you seen close calls out here? I do. I see them in this intersection all the time. Like what? Uh, I see people that don't don't slow down, don't stop for the stop sign, and uh, speed through it. All right, Honey's getting stuff done. Bruce hopes that people will slow down to see Honey while learning to slow down for the kiddos. A traffic study by Go Safe Lab says children are more likely to die from getting hit by a car in Texas than in any other state. And we could be seeing average gas prices drop to 325 by Halloween. U.S. oil prices plunged by 5.6% to $84.22 a barrel, making it the biggest single day drop in a year. Experts predict gas prices dropping to 350 a gallon in the next few weeks. And a chief analyst with the Oil Price Information Service foresees a 325 price point by the end of the month. The November election is fast approaching and so is the deadline to register to vote. Tuesday is the last day you'll be able to register if you have not done so yet. There are 14 state propositions on the ballot. Early voting starts in October 30th, 23rd, excuse me, and goes to November 3rd. Election day there is Tuesday, November 16th, and I'm sure that will be covering it all across the city. Absolutely. More information. Okay, guys, it's 839 right now, and we've gone up a little bit, 58 degrees, but still beautiful outside. So warm outside. Okay, UTSA breaking records. We'll take a look at the incoming freshman class. That's after the break. And taking a live look outside there, live cam on the city of San Antonio, the skyline there, the sun's come up on what is expected to be a gorgeous Sunday. Sarah Spivey is hanging out with us. She's gonna give us the forecast in just a bit. Close to 6,000 college freshmen taking classes this fall at the University of San Antonio, a record for the institution. UTSA says half of these students are from Bear County, while 46% come from other parts of the state. 59% of the students are Hispanic. Overall enrollment grew 1.5% with a total of 34,864 undergrad and grad students 
attending UTSA. That's this is good news. Yes. This is wonderful. I have a mm -hmm. niece that is in her sophomore year. Mm -hmm. I have a cousin that's in his freshman year and they are absolutely loving it. They are also from Texas. Yeah, UTSA just continues to grow. We have the downtown campus also, so yeah, good things there for those Roadrunners. Birds up. Birds up. UTSA. <laughs> All right, and we were just talking about soups during the break, so here's one here. This is a college kid food staple, especially when we get to cooler weather. Bill Miller vegetable soup is back, baby. Yes, it is back. The San Antonio-based chain posted about the return of the very popular soup, right, sir? I, it's good. I love this soup. Okay. I get mad when I can't order it early in the morning because I only have breakfast. Not yeah. that I'm a diva or anything. Well, it was met with more. <laughs> Well, I, well, I, I can't help you there. You <laughs> no the soup, soup for you. <laughs> there you go. Um, so this post right here was met with more than a thousand likes on Facebook and more than 700 likes on Instagram. Bill Miller's posted about the return this week, writing that the soup has entered the group chat. And rightly so, because it's 58 degrees. Mm -hmm. And I okay, Absolutely. I just don't like it when like people who aren't from Texas. They make fun of us <laughs> by being like, 58 degrees is cold. Hey, listen, just Sweat like people Sweat get upset in the winter mm -hmm. up north when they're hold inside for like three months at a mm -hmm. time. I feel that way about yes. the summer. Yes. The summers are not the same anymore. We, we, you can't go outside. We got through it. Uh, we, Little... got, we got through it. Yes. It is in the <laughs> 50s right now in San Antonio. It feels amazing outside. One of the reasons why it feels amazing, humidity is low. Take a look at two points right now in the 40s. And how long will this nice low humidity last? Well, we'll see low humidity tomorrow. This is a look at the future cast dew point. Tomorrow dew points are going to be in the 40s. However, by Tuesday in the middle of the day, that's when we're going to see the return of some moisture and it'll be noticeably muggy by Tuesday afternoon. Dew points will be back in the 60s. So enjoy it while you can. Take a look outside right now. Mostly sunny, 55 degrees. Winds are relatively calm right now. We're going to see winds turn to the south and to the east today at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. So not nearly as breezy as it was yesterday. Outside it's 51 in Kerrville, 57 in Yavaldi, 60 in Del Rio, 56 in New Braunfels, 59 in Gonzales, 60 in Pleasanton. Hey, it's uh, 48 still in Bandera and 49 in Comfort, 54 at Port SA area, 60 in Castroville. It's uh, 59 in Canyon Lake and 51 in Bolverde. As you look at your KSAT 12 hour forecast, mostly sunny out there right now. A few clouds are going to work their way in this afternoon, mainly those high thin cirrus clouds. 72 by noon, so you need the light jacket now, but by noon it's going to be in the low 70s. And as we take a look to this afternoon, 80 degrees for the high in San Antonio, but even some locations are going to stay below 80. And then tonight, temperatures are going to fall after sunset into the low 70s and upper 60s. 60s by about 10 will be in the 60s. It's going to be 75 in Bernie, 81 in Rio Medina, 81 in Castroville, 80 in Seguin, 82 in New Braunfels, 79 in Kerrville, Yavaldi you'll be at 79, 81 in Pleasanton, 82 in Floresville, 82 in Nixon Smiley. All right, showing you rain chances this week. They're very low. We have a 20% chance on Tuesday, Tuesday night and Wednesday in San Antonio. This is for San Antonio's forecast. Rain chances are higher, in fact, a lot higher south of San Antonio. And one of the reasons why is because there's a tropical storm out in the Pacific, Tropical Storm Lydia. Now, Tropical Storm Lydia has winds right now of 70 miles per hour. It is quickly going to become a hurricane, likely to become a Category 1 hurricane as it heads toward Puerto Vallarta and Guadalajara. It's going to bring winds and lots of rain for these areas, but it'll fall apart across the mountains of Mexico by Wednesday uh, during the middle of the day. This is going to help to channel some moisture from the Gulf of Mexico towards South Texas. And so as we look at potential rain through Wednesday, you can see that the vast majority of the rain will fall well south or well east of San Antonio. So we're talking about areas like the Rio Grande Valley, Corpus Christi, Victoria, Howlettsville, out toward Houston. That's where rain chances are highest Tuesday and Wednesday. But here in San Antonio, we are going to see some subtle changes. The return of moisture Tuesday afternoon, as I talked about, and also clouds are going to be out there too. So it'll be a cloudy gray day on Tuesday and mostly cloudy on Wednesday. That's going to 
to help to keep our temperatures from soaring. So even though it'll be muggy in the mornings, it'll be mild in the afternoons. 80 on Tuesday, 83 on Wednesday. Now, it will become warm on Thursday with a high of 90 degrees. But before it can get too warm, a cool front is going to move through on Friday, and that will set up a lovely weekend. We're talking mornings back in the 50s, afternoons in the 70s and low 80s with low humidity. And I am hoping great viewing weather for the annular ring of fire solar eclipse. Now when we say annular, I don't mean annual. I don't mean it's going to happen every year. That annular is just a fancy word for ring. <laughs> a ring of fire uh, in the sky as the moon moves in front of the sun in our sky. In San Antonio, right along the path, and what's even more fascinating is not even six months later, we're going to have a total solar eclipse visible in the hill country and parts of San Antonio, Oof. too, on April 8th. So, KSAT 12, we're your eclipse mm -hmm. authority We've got you covered. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Uh -huh. Yeah, thanks, guys. Okay, 849 right now and 58 degrees outside. Tomorrow on GMSA, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and we'll hear from multiple doctors from the Start Center for Cancer Care. Yeah, very important. And before we head to break, we want to let you know that starting tomorrow, GMSA, a.k.a. Good Morning San Antonio, will no longer have a 4.30 a.m. show. So if you're one of our early risers, get this, you can still catch us from 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. every weekday morning. You can also always stream us live wherever you get your news. We'll be right back. Okay, if you're in the spooky mood, like we're here, and I don't know why these are spooky. <laughs> rocks are going country. I guess it's kind of scary. In honor of the special <laughs> month yeah. known by its fans as Croctober. All right, look at these right here. So the iconic footwear brand Crocs announced Thursday that it's launching the Crocs classic cowboy boots. Fans, thoughts? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I, I, go ahead. I'll, I'll give my thoughts. Okay. After. The company says the cowboy boot has been one of the most widely requested designs. Okay. In the brand's history. So they're available online at crocs.com and select crocs retail stores starting October 23rd, also known as croc day. I don't know if you're gonna be super stylish wearing these to the San Antonio rodeo. I have a feeling mm -hmm. that um, real cowboys mm -hmm. will have some things to say about these. Here's the thing, guys. They <laughs> yeah. are Spurs colors. Oh, Maybe a Spurs look at game? That. The silver lining. I like that. That'd the be black some, and silver lining. That'd be there. like a flex, mm -hmm. a flex to wear at Spurs games. Please wear like black socks with uh -huh. them yeah. because it's they're going to be smelly. You think it'll be a little bit stinky in there? Yeah, that's like that's a lot of material. Boots. I know they have the vents. No one needs mm -hmm. stinky stuff coming out of the vent. <laughs> All right. Um. We once had a sports intern who won a whole year's worth of Crocs. Anyways. Wait, the, really? Yes. How? The, uh, she got in some contest. Interesting. <laughs> okay. Two San Antonio favorites here. <laughs> Combining for a popular festival. Uh, yes, we all love this. The Barbacoa and Big Red Festival till, still taking place today. We're going to have food, drinks, live music, and it will all fill up the R&J Music Pavilion. My brother from another mother there. In Pleasanton Road <laughs> near Brook City Base area on the city's south side. Festivals from four to midnight today with general admission. They're only ten bucks. Not bad. Yeah. Okay. It took me a second. Mm -hmm. R and J Pavilion. Yes, R J. R and J. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> All right. Hey, it's already sixty-two in San Antonio. So we started off at fifty-five. It's already sixty-two. We've got completely sunny skies out there right now. So temperatures are going to allow to warm, but it's still cool. Uh, as we look a little closer to San Antonio, still 51 in Kerrville and in Comfort, 52 in Bulverde. Here's a look at your forecast. By 10, we'll be at 65, 72 at noon, 80 for the high. Winds are variable today at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Tomorrow morning, another cool start at 58. Low humidity for most of the day tomorrow as well. Muggy again by Tuesday. We'll see a cloudy day on Tuesday and Wednesday with highs in the low 80s, up to 90 degrees on Thursday, but a cool front comes to the rescue on Friday. Wonderful. Thank you, Sarah. Hey, RJ, it's been fun yeah, having you this weekend. Yeah, it's been amazing being with you guys. Yeah, absolutely. Have a great one, everybody. Go